My name is uh, Walter Joseph Marm, and uh, my rank in Vietnam was second lieutenant. I stayed in for 30 years and retired as a full colonel. Retired in 95. Uh, I was in the first battle of the, uh, the, or the first major battle of the Vietnam War. Um, it's called the Battle of Adrang. It was a very intense three-day battle on the 14th, 15th, and 16th of November, 1965. And uh, I was a platoon leader. And uh, we were trying to find the enemy. And uh, we went in on uh, <clears throat> Sunday morning, the 14th, with 450 soldiers of uh, 1st Battalion, 7th Cavalry. Uh, a book has been written about the battle called We Were Soldiers Once and Young by the battalion commander, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Hal Moore, and the only embedded reporter at the battle was uh, Joe Galloway. So they co-authored the book. And then uh, 10 years later or so, they, uh, Mel Gibson made a movie about it called We Were Soldiers. But uh, that's about, the, uh, about that, that battle. And uh, <clears throat> I was in A Company, and uh, we were the second company, and B Company w uh, came in first. Started about uh, 1040. And, uh, and then we were the second company in you know, a little before noon. Uh, B Company uh, captured uh, an NVA who was very quickly, and they said they were uh, three battalions that are looking for Americans, and we, I heard they said great because we were looking for the North Vietnamese too. They were pretty fresh, they were, uh, had traveled down from the north, uh, from, uh, you know, from North Vietnam along the Cambodian border. We were uh, very close to the Cambodian border in, uh, in near the Chupong Mountains. We're about five kilometers from the border, and uh, um, B Company was first in and one of the and and met and were out looking for the enemy and made contact. And uh, their one of their platoons was separated from the rest of the company, and uh, the rest of the company couldn't couldn't get up to them, so they pulled back and. Uh, my platoon was detached from A Company and, and was going to help Bravo Company out because they were one platoon light to try to go up and, and get that uh, their unit. Uh, so we made that first attempt, but we were taking and as we moved forward, we were, we took uh, we were it was kind of a slugfest. We were taking casualties and they were taking casualties too. But we decided to pull back and. Uh, we, we made a second attempt, but uh, on the second attempt, it was uh, the entire uh, A Company and B Company. Uh, and so uh, then we had artillery to prep our advance as we started to move forward, artillery and mortar fire to give us some support. So we, uh, we started making a, a second attempt, and again, we were taking casualties, and, and when you take a casualty, you have to, you know, Get them, get them out of there, and so that, you know, detracted from our strength as we were trying to take, you know, advance and, and take care of our wounded. Um, it was starting to get uh, late in the afternoon. We wanted to get up to them before the, you know, before nightfall. So uh, it was kind of every position there was there was a firefight in terms of you know everybody had their own little piece of the pie and piece of the action. And uh, it was not heavy jungle like you think of in Vietnam. It was more elephant grass and shrubs and trees. So it was uh, fairly open. Uh, we, we didn't have to hack our way through the jungle like you think of uh, in Vietnam, which very prevalent, but not in this area. And so uh, in front of our position, uh, my platoon of 30 some men there was a, a large uh, firing position. It was a, an anthill, solidified rock with shrubs around it and trees. And that was, seemed to be where the, a lot of the firing was coming from. 
So in the heat of a battle, I, I, I was using sign language to tell my, one of my soldiers to, to go up there and throw a grenade over the top of it. And uh, he thought I meant throw it from where we're at, which he did. He threw it and it, uh, it was deflected by the, the bushes and the shrubs and landed in front, which is, and it went off, but it didn't do any damage. So we, we continued to move forward, but we were taking a lot of casualties. So rather than waste any more time, uh, I told another one of my men to shoot a law in, a light anti-tank weapon. It's a one-shot disposable bazooka. It's called a, a law. Uh, very good weapon. Um, and so he, uh, he armed it and put it on his shoulder and fired it and didn't go off, which uh, because of all the the uh, humidity and, uh, and rain we were getting, uh, it malfunctioned. So I took the, uh, the law from him, and what you do is you uh, close it up, and you, then you open it back up, and you try again. That's the, the clearing mechanism. So I, 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 I did that and, and fired it, and it went off and made a big boom. And I thought I knocked out the bunker, big cloud of smoke. And, and, uh, but the, uh, you know, the anthill was still there, and it really picked up our morale, and we were able to move forward a little bit further. But the, uh, the, the firing started again from that, around that position. So I didn't completely destroy it. So rather than waste any more time, I told my men to hold their fire. I didn't want to get shot up by my own men. And, and I, I just ran forward across about 30 meters to the, to the anthill. When I got to it, uh, I, I threw a grenade over the top. It went off and I went around to the left side of it and uh, finished some more NVA that were trying to shoot me. And, uh, and then once it was silenced, I went, you know, I, tur I turned to my men to uh, tell them to come on, let's go. We have to get to the, the platoon that was trapped on the side of a mountain. And that's when I, I was shot in the jaw. And it, it, it was not from that position, which further someone back, I was standing up, you know, so my men could see me. And uh, somewhere further back in the, the enemy territory, I got shot probably by a uh, a carbine or an AK-47, I'm not sure what, but it uh, it entered my jaw and shattered it and exited underneath my right jaw and I had to feel my mouth to make sure uh, you know, I still had a jaw left uh, and so I have an excuse for slurring my words and uh, but anyway, uh, a couple of my uh, my men came up uh, I didn't have a specific, usually you have a medic with uh, each platoon I didn't have one with my platoon, but I had a, one of my sergeants, one of my squad leaders was a medic in Korea, and so he was carrying our aid bag and taking care of our wounded and doing double duty, and then per, and also being a squad leader in charge of uh, his 10 men. But uh, Sergeant Tolliver came up along with another guy, and they, they gave me a compress and put it around my face, and then a couple of my, uh, a couple of my soldiers uh, I was a walking wounded, carried me back, or kind of walked me back to our uh, battalion CP where General, uh, the battalion commander was and all of his group of, and also other wounded were there too. And so that was the end of uh, that first day of, of, of my action and I was evacuated probably by Bruce Crandall or Ed Freeman who were bringing in uh, ammunition and water in, under, in a hot LZ. And for their actions they were also awarded the medal. Uh, the Medal of Honor, but uh, that's basically my action. The, the uh, it was a very very intense battle. We didn't get up to that platoon that day. We had to pull back and and after a little bit, you know, the, after a little bit later in the day because it was starting to get dark, and you know, get our defensive positions set up, <clears throat> and then uh, and then uh, we were able to get up to the platoon the next day. They uh, were surrounded and and. And uh, a young uh, buck sergeant named uh, Sergeant E5 named Ernie Savage uh, led after his platoon leader and chain of command were killed or wounded. He took over and never lost another man killed or wounded. Was able to provide a ring of steel around his position uh, throughout the night and they withstood three determined NVA attacks with uh, their, their own uh, organic weapons and uh, mortar and artillery fire. And then we were able to get up to him the next morning. But it, uh, the battle continued for two more days.
after I was shot and evacuated uh, because of my wound, usually bone wounds where they evacuate you to the States. So I was evacuated to the States <coughs> and uh, they try to put you as close to home as and I was uh, at a Valley Forge Army Hospital in Philadelphia, and my home was over on the other side of the state in the Pittsburgh area. <clears throat> but uh, I went back in 69 as a captain. I made it through the whole year of, uh, of 69 as an infantry company commander and, and, uh, S and uh, intelli uh, intelligence officer, the S2. We tell the, the, all the veterans that it was, you know, it, everything that happens in combat is, is very, very tough and there's a lot of brave ac actions and things that go on that, that, aren't, that aren't recognized. And so we're the caretaker of the medal for all the, the brave men that, that we served with. And so that's, that's very, very important that, that they're recognized for their, for their actions. And so that's, you know, not only Vietnam, the Vietnam War, but other wars before and after. And we're the greatest country in the world because of uh, our veterans who have, who have uh, done their duty and served in combat and in peacetime.